My name's Kevin Steed. Subscribe to Hill Steven on YouTube.com or I'll come to your house and ruin your life. Hey guys, what is up? It is I, your boy Heel, back at it again with a new video. This will be my WWE SmackDown Live review and recap for September the 5th, 2017. SmackDown Live went off the air a couple minutes ago and now here I am giving you guys my thoughts on this week's episode before i get into the video and give my thoughts on smackdown live i want to thank all of you for tuning into the channel watching this video if you're new to this channel hit that subscribe button down below stomp on that like button right now and share this video throughout your entire social media platforms facebook twitter tumblr i tweet throughout a lot of these shows raw smackdown live nxt impact even pay-per-views you can follow me on twitter at heel steven that bell icon be notified when these videos drop be part of that notification squad all right smackdown live overall tonight i'll be very honest i thought it was a okay show like literally better than last week's but not really by much the show kicked off with carmella and ellsworth in the ring they were getting ready for carmella versus natalia as advertised last week and before the match even began, right, out comes Kevin Owens, and he interrupts Carmella and Ellsworth, and he's offering to be the referee for her match, and he tells the referee to take off his shirt, just like last week, and then Shay comes out, and he tries to literally get some reasoning into Kevin Owens about what happened last week, and everything that's been leading up to this very moment, you know, him losing the U.S. title, how at SummerSlam he lost, you know, fair and square. Weeks after, he had the opportunity to pick a referee, and he picked Baron Corbin, who literally walked out halfway near the match, and he still lost. It was not the U.S. champion. And then Owens goes on to mention that, hey, you know, the reason why Corbin left is because of Shane, and then Shane put on the referee shirt of the whole pinfall. Like, he went to this whole savage mode, where he said, oh, Shane McMahon would have been better off not surviving that helicopter accident that he had a couple months ago how his family his wife and his kids would have been better off if he just died and this literally shane went into this whole like beast mode and tried to attack kevin owens and yes we did see shane's sloppy punches like literally i just wish i just wish bret hart would just teach shane how to throw punches because either thing about it right it's cool to see shane in the ring all the fuck you want but it's really unbearable when i see this fucker try to throw punches like a wimp and literally you see shane just go off on kevin owens you have all the officials come out daniel bryan even comes out and he literally tried to like get some sense into shane right and then we go to commercial break and then backstage you see kevin owens who is literally helped to the locker room by officials right he's sitting there in a corner and then daniel bryan finds him and he tries to apologize for shane's behavior and then kevin owens says that he's going to own the company and after he takes every member of the mcmahon family to court and he tells brian to enjoy his job while he still can and brian asks if there's any other way they can handle the situation because obviously of course brian does not want to see kevin owens go into the lawsuit which he could probably even win if you think about it right and then owens says maybe he'll go to the police and file an official criminal charges against shane again i'll be honest here i love this opening segment i loved everything about it a good way to kick off the show the people were into it and it just showed you just you know how we're getting to that match it's gonna happen a hell in a cell I'm, I, I get that feeling okay then we had natalia versus carmel the match was okay for what it was the big moment here was james ellsworth he got on the apron and he had the briefcase in his hand and he drops it it's literally bounced off the canvas and the referee looks at this shit right and he thinks that oh carmel gonna cash in and then carmel is like oh no i'm not i'm not she gets distracted because she's mad what else we're trying to do here and then natalia just literally rolled her up for the one two three and then after the match was all said and done we have ellsworth apologizing he's sorry he's sorry for what happened and then carmela says ellsworth is sorry because he's sorry for the excuse of a human being that he is carmela says that he's not even a human being and that his mother should have gave him away at birth and literally just again carmela just in pure savage mode here right and then she tells him that they're through carmela like wondering how the hell el would even have a job with the company i'm wondering the same thing too seriously okay just saying and then we had the re-debut of dolph ziggler was literally him making fun of all the gimmicks like he came out to the ranks oh this is not gonna work he then goes back, comes out as John Cena. Like he wears the John Cena like blue like hat. Tried to like imitate his entrance. 
Then he goes back. He comes dressed as Macho Man Randy Savage. He has a woman with him too. I guess that's supposed to be Elizabeth. And then he goes back again. And he comes out as fucking Naomi. <laughs> the whole glow thing, what have you. Again, the whole purpose here, he's making fun of the gimmick. People don't appreciate him. I'll be honest. I said it before. I'll say it again. I think... Dolph Ziggler would be better off just leaving WWE, having a killer run on the independent circuit, maybe going over to New Japan, join the Bullet Club, I don't fucking know. We then had Aiden English versus Sami Zayn, the rematch from last week, because again, the match didn't count because Kevin Owens was the referee, did the fast count, what have you. And to my surprise, Aiden English beat Sami Zayn again. Holy fuck, wow. I am not sure if Aiden English is getting right now a singles push, if so, Make him the U.S. champion. Why the fuck not? I know people aren't happy with Sami Zayn losing off and off again. But again, when you're Uber driver, it fucking happens, okay? English grabs the mic. He starts singing again. And then Zayn just literally chases him to the back. Again, I get the feeling this will go on to Hell in a Cell. Can you guys smell the pre-show match? I'm just saying, okay? We didn't get a backstage segment where Brian is watching the footage from early in the day. The mayhem where we had Owens and Shane. And the New Day comes out. And their new underwear. They're promoting the new fucking underwear that they have. You literally gotta be shitting me, right? The new day go from promoting popsicles and booty o cereals, and now these motherfuckers are promoting fucking Fruit of the Loom underwear. You gotta be shitting me, okay? And the Usos appear also to announce that next week, live from Las Vegas, it will be the Usos versus the New Day for the SmackDown Live Tag Team Championships in a Sin City street fight. And then Brian gets a phone call telling him that he has to go out to the ring to call out Shane. And that Brian's in the ring, and he calls out Shane. Literally, he tells Shane what he did was wrong. He remembers that when Brian became the general manager, that Shane told him, hey, you know, now that you're in this role, you cannot put your hands on anyone in the locker room or any of the employees. The company's first, right? And he referenced that. He also referenced how a year ago on Talking Smack, The Miz went off on Daniel Bryan, and after that, every single time, Miz would go out of his way to poke at Daniel Bryan, and Bryan so many times wanted to literally put his hands on the Miz, but he remembered that, hey, this job is important, he cannot jeopardize his job. You know, the WWE's first, if you will, right? Apparently, he goes on to tell Shane that because of all this, now Kevin Owens is pressing charges, and then Shane goes on to tell him, hey, listen, you're a father, you know what it's like when someone mentions your kids. And he has a point. When you think about it, Shane does have a point. And then Shane goes on to say, hey, about this whole lawsuit, he'll take care of it. But then Brian tells him that before he came out to the ring, he got a phone call from Vince McMahon to tell him that Shane McMahon, as of this moment, is indefinitely suspended. Now, here's my whole thing with this, okay? Here's why I find it kind of very hypocritical and funny at the same time. You're having Daniel Bryan, the same guy, right, who literally three years ago or so was fighting the establishment fighting the authority right and now he has become in essence the company yes man he's become a part of the authority here he's become part of the establishment but you know where this is leading up to i guarantee you at hell in a cell we'll see shane and kevin owens if shane wins he becomes reinstated again something like that and if kevin owens wins i guarantee you it'll be him having control of the wwe Something like that, I guarantee you, will happen to Hell in a Cell. We then had a backstage segment with Jinder Mahal, and he's asked who we'd rather see, you know, win between Randy Orton and Shinsuke Nakamura. And he said it doesn't matter. He says he represents Asia better than Nakamura ever could because he stands for the 1.3 billion people in the greatest country on earth. Jinder says, may the better man win, and may the man fall to the modern day Maharaj. And then he goes speaks in India, in Punjabi, if you will, but hey, it is what it is. We then had Baron Corbin versus Ty Dillinger, where AJ Styles was literally on commentary, so much for the weekly US Championship Open challenges here. What the fuck? The match for what it was, okay, it was there. The match was back and forth, there were some good near falls here. And then near the end, Corbin hits the cheap shot literally to tie in the throat. And it hits the end of day for the one, two, three. And this literally gets AJ mad. AJ Styles is fucking pissed off this happened, right? Why the fuck he had a cheap shot on Ty Dillinger? And then backstage, you see AJ going up to Ty Dillinger to inform him that, hey, next week, the US Open Challenge is only available for Ty Dillinger. So next week, we're getting Ty Dillinger versus AJ Styles for the US title. 
We're also getting a tag team title match between the Usos and the New Day. And we're also getting the SmackDown Women's Championship match between Naomi and Natalya. Three championship matches next week for SmackDown Live. Oh boy, Las Vegas. And at the same time, it's like, okay, we saw this match before last week where Ty and Corbin were fighting outside the ring to get in the ring to fight AJ. Dillinger won that little scramble just to lose to AJ in a minute. So why would I want to see this match again? Honestly, what I see happening here is Baron Corbin getting involved, causing the distraction, causing probably the disqualification. If anything, we get a backstage segment where James Ellsworth is begging Carmella to just give him a second chance, right? And that he promises that he'll keep his mouth shut and he'll do what he's told. And Carmella tells him to shut up and says that from here on out, they are going to do things her way. And then she literally kisses Ellsworth in the most uncomfortable way ever on the lips and then slaps him and they walk out together. Literally, Carmella reminds me of that one girl that you all may know. She's angry as shit, but then is deep inside. She's horny as fuck, but then she gets angry again. The most bipolar chick you might ever meet and then we get the main event randy orton and shinsuke nakamura yeah jinder mahal literally just chilling there in a skybox watching the whole thing the match for what it was pretty good just back and forth orton tried to do the rko numerous times but gets countered and also at near the end right orton goes for the rko it looked like he hits it but nakamura counters it to the fucking arm bar right and then to the triangle choke orton then power bombs him it was all said and done though or in falls victim to the kinshasa so literally shinsuke nakamura in under a year on the main roster literally beat john cena and randy orton clean in the middle of the ring and people say oh he's fucking bad he's fucking ruined i don't see how so at hell in a cell we're getting shinsuke nakamura versus jinder mahal for the wwe championship this is what i don't want to see what i mean with that is i'm all for the match fine However, this match should not take place inside the Hell in a Cell structure. If anything, the only match, in my opinion right now, that should take place inside the structure is Shane versus Owens, which we all know is going to happen, okay? Because apparently after all this, right, we go to a backstage segment after this match where Kevin Owens leaving the arena, sorta, and Brian like, literally tries to get back to, you know, to Kevin Owens. Try to work something out. Brian tells Owen that next week, Vince McMahon will be here to address the whole situation. So again, you know where this is going. At Hell in a Cell, again, we're going to definitely see Kevin Owens and Shane McMahon. And again, in my opinion, it should be inside Hell in a Cell structure. Now, do I see Shane, if they're to do this, do I see Shane jumping on top of the cell again? No. But that's, in my opinion, again, the only match that should be inside the structure. Shinsuke and Jinder could have a good match all the fuck you want. But it should not take place in the fucking structure. The last thing I want to see is fucking gender my balls inside the fucking structure defending the championship. Shout out to Don Tony, by the way. Drop me your comments down below your thoughts on SmackDown Live today. Did you enjoy it or not? Follow me on Twitter at HeelSteven. Make sure, like all my videos, join the notification squad, hit that bell icon. And as always, hate, comment, and subscribe. Remember, it's wrestling.